Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. We're back with question 9, part C and D on the Math 206.5 final exam review. Question C wants us to write the partial fraction decomposition of the rational expression x plus 1 over x squared minus x minus 6. And what's the first thing we need to do? You guessed it, factor the denominator. So the target product is negative 6, the target sum is negative 1. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1? That would be negative 3 and positive 2. And we can use a shortcut since the leading coefficient is 1. So we are going to rewrite the denominator as x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now we're going to take that factor denominator, x plus 1 over x minus 3 times x plus 2, and we're going to use the information that we know. We know that previously there was some fraction over here that had a denominator of x minus 3, and it was being added to some other fabulous fraction with a denominator of x plus 2. Our goal, let's figure out what those fractions were mystery fraction 1 and mystery fraction 2. To start, I'm going to clear out the, all of the denominators here, my favorite thing to do, by multiplying by that least common denominator, which I know will be that original denominator. Okay, when I go to multiply through, I'm going to go over there, and that's the x minus 3 times x plus 2 will cancel with the x minus 3 times x plus 2, leaving behind the numerator x plus 1. When I distribute here, the factor of x minus 3 will cancel, so we're going to have a being multiplied to x plus 2. And here we're going to have b being multiplied, the x plus 2's will cancel, to x minus 3. Let's clean up the right-hand side. So we have x plus 1 is equal to ax plus 2a plus bx minus 3b. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a system of equations. The first equation is going to take any term that contains an x, and we're going to write it as its own separate equation. So on the left we have x, and on the right we have ax plus bx. Now I don't actually want the x's here, no offense x, but you're kind of cramping my style, so I'm going to divide all three terms by a factor of x. Uh, x divided by x is 1, be careful with that, it's 1, it's not 0. ax divided by x will be a, and bx divided by b will be b. So here's our first equation for our system of equations. Our second equation is going to be all the constants, the, all the terms that don't contain an x. On the left hand side we have a 1, on the right hand side we have 2a minus 3b. Now I have my two equations. I want to eliminate one of the two variables. It looks like if I multiply this top equation by 3, I would have the exact opposite coefficient as the bottom equation for b, so I like that. I'm going to multiply by 3. I end up with 3 equals 3a plus 3b. And now I can just solve straight down by adding. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2a plus 3a is 5a. And negative 3b plus 3b, those cancel, become 0. To get a by itself, I'll divide both sides by 5. And I figured out that a is equal to 4 over 5. Okay, what's the value of b? Well, I'm going to plug it into that first equation where we have 1 equals a plus b. So 1 equals 4 fifths plus what? And that's going to tell us our value for b. If you don't know how to do this mental math, that's okay. Um, we're going to subtract 4 fifths from both sides. And then because 1 is a fraction, the, well, actually 4 fifths is a fraction, 1 is not a fraction, um, we want to rewrite both to have denominators of 5. 1 is how many fifths? 1 is 5 fifths. So we'll have 5 fifths minus 4 fifths is equal to 5 minus 4 is 1 fifth. And thus, b is equal to 1 fifth. Now I'm going to go back to my original two separated expressions. I'm going to plug in for a and b, and that's going to be my final result, although it does say to check, so we'll check too. So I'm going to make sure I have plenty of space at the bottom to check. When I go up top, now when I plug in 4 fifths, I don't really want the complex fraction. Having that 4 fifths, that 5 is just going to join that factor in the denominator that's already there. So we're going to end up with 4 over 5 times x minus 3, and b is positive, so I can say plus 1 over 5 times x plus 2. And there is my gorgeous partial fraction decomposition. And now let's check our work. So to check, we want to add the two expressions and make sure we really do end up back with what we started with. So we want to add 4 over 5 times x minus 3 to 1 over 5 times x plus 2. 
and I have a least common denominator here of, I need a factor of 5, I need a factor of x minus 3, and a factor of x plus 2. The first fraction is missing the factor of x plus 2, so I'm going to multiply that to both the numerator and denominator. The second fraction is missing an x minus 3 factor in the denominator. Now they have the same denominator, so I can combine into 1. I have 5, I have a factor of x minus 3, and a factor of x plus 2. In the numerator, I have 4 times x plus 2 plus 1 times x minus 3, so I don't really need to do anything with that 1, and there's no subtraction, so I don't have to be careful there. Now we can distribute. We get 4x plus 8 plus x minus 3 divided by 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2, and 4x plus x, so 4x plus 1x is 5x, 8 minus 3 is 5, so we have 5x plus 5 over 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. It looks like I have a common denominator in the numerator of 5, a common denominator, a common factor in the numerator of 5. So I have 5 times x plus 1 over 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Is it going to squeeze in? Just barely. The factors of 5 cancel. And is this what I started with? Way over here x plus 1 in the numerator. If I was to distribute this, that would be x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 minus 3x and plus 2x do make that minus x in the middle. I feel very confident that this is the correct partial fraction decomposition. Let's look at our final example of the partial fraction decomposition family. Wait a minute. The denominator is already factored and there's only one unique factor. So what do we do here? This one gets a little bit sneaky, but bear with me here. This is what we're going to do. We know that 2x minus 3 over x minus 1 quantity squared was originally equal to two fractions being added or subtracted. But we need unique denominators. They can't be identical, otherwise we end up with a whole big mess and nothing really happens. So what we do is we say, okay, one fraction had a denominator of a single factor. And we're going to say that single factor is x minus 1, just one factor. Meanwhile, the other fraction had a denominator of x minus 1 quantity squared. That was sneaky stuff, wasn't it? It was. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the least common denominator, x minus 1 squared. When I distribute over here, it's going to just cancel with that denominator. We're going to be left with x minus 3. I'm going to distribute here. One of them, one of the factors, will cancel with 1 x minus 1. So we're going to have a times x minus 1. And when I distribute here, the whole denominator is going to cancel. We'll be left with plus b. Now let's distribute 2x minus 3 equals ax minus a plus b. Let's set up our two equations. The first one, we're relating all the terms that contain an x. So we're going to have 2x equals ax. And we're going to divide both sides by x because we don't really want the x there. No offense, x. And we get 2 equals a. Hey, that was nice. We're halfway there. We know a. Now we need to figure out b. Let's set up our second equation. We have negative 3 is equal to negative a plus b. I'm going to substitute in 2 for a. I get negative 3 is equal to negative 2 plus b. To get b by itself, I need to add 2 to both sides. And I end up with negative 1 equals b. So a is 2 and b is negative 1. Let's go back to where we wrote them separately and we end up with a is 2, 2 over x minus 1, oh, I want to say minus 1 over x minus 1 squared. And that should do it, but let's check our work first. I like being 100% on this, so let's check. Does 2 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 squared really give us what we want? Well, let's see, we need a common denominator here. We're so close, we just need... Uh, two factors of x minus 1 in both denominators. This one only has 1, so I need one more x minus 1 factor. This one's set, so we're going to have 2 times x minus 1 minus 1 all over x minus 1 squared. That's 2x minus 2 minus 1. I was getting scared, but then I looked over and saw we're all good. Over x minus 1 quantity squared. That's 2x minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 over 
x minus 1 squared, which matches what we started with. Hooray! So this is the final partial fraction decomposition. These have been the practice set of partial fraction decomposition. Thank you for starting.